First things first, Johnny, how are you? I'm very well, thank you very much for asking. I'm, I'm pretty good. It's good to hear. So before we get into the album, I'd like to jump back to kind of your beginnings in music a little bit. Do you remember the first song you ever wrote? I do, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it was a very, <laughs> that was a good moment in my life, you know, for sure. But I didn't realize that if all that happened was I was, I was grounded. Mm. I can't remember what I'd done. And I wanted to go and see um, Faith No More. Who were playing at the Bataclan okay. in Paris, right? And where where we played last night. And uh, the um, I couldn't. And anyway, anyway, so then I, I went into my brother's room because he was at the show, and he um, and he had a guitar. So I thought I'd go and pick up his guitar, you know, because mm. he wasn't around. And I learned, and I and I looked up the first song in the guitar book. It told you how to play Scarborough Fair. So like A minor, E minor, and I sort of learnt, tried to learn the chords like <laughs> like that, and then I was like, and I looked, looked at the lyrics, and it was like, "Are you going to Scarborough Fair? Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme." You know, I was like, "Parsley, sage, it's got nothing to do with anything I care about." You know, so I went to my room and I got a poem that I'd written. I was like thirteen, okay. and I started singing that over those chords instead, like really bad. You know, it's like <laughs> like that. And then when I finished it, I realized, I put the guitar down and I was like, oh, maybe I just wrote a song. <laughs> you know, if I'd known I was writing a song when I started, I'd never, I'd have been too nervous. Okay. And I was like, and suddenly like the whole world went Shh, like that. And I was like, oh, maybe I could do that again. You know, and that was it. That, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because that feeling that it gave you, what was that? Could you kind of... Uh, yeah, well, I felt, well, the, when I wrote, when, as soon as I... As soon as I wrote down any words when I was a kid, I felt like I could express myself, which I didn't feel I could do with other people, unless, it was, unless I was playing sport or something was sure. fine, but like actually talking, oh, not really. <laughs> so, then, so then, yeah, but then writing it down was nothing because it was just on a page, so no one knew, you know? So, but then if I could s sing that, what I'd written down to people, then I could tell the truth, so, you know? Yeah. So what were the, was it kind of a, an epiphany moment and from there you kind of changed your daily? Yeah, it was, it was okay. a huge, I would say, yeah, it was an epiphany moment, I would say so, yeah. I mean, I, I, like, I felt like I could communicate, finally, mm. <laughs> you know. And, well, I assume you... But you then I ran out, then I just, then I, you know, I couldn't play the guitar. I mean, I, I could mm. not play, it would, you know, for a chord, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> But then I like went out in the street. I started playing to people. You know, I'd literally be out there with the guitar, just going, "Hey, do you want to hear a song?" And people going like, oh. "I'm going, no, no, wait, it's really good." You know, <laughs> like, wait, bang, <laughs> you know, like that. And and from then on, I just kept playing. I really liked playing in front of people. Okay. You know, how come? Well, was it the kind of the the exchange of energy in a sense or well, I don't know I think I was 13 I think I was probably trying to find a girlfriend <laughs> fair enough, fair <laughs> you enough. Know? and I figured if I go out in the street and play my guitar there's more chance than if I if I stay at home you know well good point yeah maybe and um well because well, you mentioned playing in front of people what was it like then because uh Especially uh, late '90s, if, if we go to yeah. that period where where a lot of bands were were kind mm -hmm. of coming up, and mm -hmm. I, I, I assume there was a very very uh, energetic atmosphere in in, in England, in, in, yeah, London. in London at that well, time. Oh, the late '90s, not so much. It was okay. it, 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 in a weird way because in in the in the middle of the '90s, it was Britpop, and mm -hmm. it was you know Oasis and Blur and Pulp and everything like that, and it was really it was a big deal. And it was a big deal for us. We were teenagers, we were young teenagers, and we would kind of like, you could go to the bars where like Noel Gallagher and people like that were hanging out and you could like see them. Okay. You know, you could smell their shadow, you know what I mean? And that was a big deal, <laughs> you know? And then like, or you'd be in a club or something like that and you'd, you know, like you'd actually see the people who were making music. So that was a really big scene. But by the time we got to the end of the 90s, it was, it had burnt itself out. Okay. And so we didn't really... That was kind of like we, like uh, at the time was like myself and like the libertines and stuff. We mm. we we kind of 
we hated all the bands that were out there in, at the end, in, in the end of the 90s because just being in a band seemed like such a cliched thing to do because okay. we'd had like five years of Oasis, you know what I mean? And obviously they were great, but like after five years any, in, in music, that's a long time, right? Sure. So we kind of like, we wanted, at that point we wanted to do it differently, you know, so we were like doing acoustic stuff and like just trying to, I don't know, we, I don't know. It wasn't until, say like early noughties, like Moldy Peaches, White Stripes, sort of yeah, 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 strokes, stuff like that, coming back in, where we were like, oh, maybe being in a band is, is fun again, you know? Maybe that's okay, because they refreshed it, because they didn't have that baggage of like, of, you know, quo oasis, you know? Right. You know? And it was like, um, so then it got exciting again, and then we were all like, well, yeah, we're gonna do it. So when that kind of, uh, that excitement started up again, because then uh, a lot of indie bands kind of come out, yeah. one of them uh, which yeah. were you guys. Yeah. Uh, and then you kind of hit a note. I, I, I don't know that in, in terms of, of kind of uh, uh, society or the audience. Yeah, yeah. So, so do, and this might be very difficult, but do you know why? Why it hit a note, that type of music th that you were making at the time? Hmm. Uh, I, I think that... Well, I, you know, I think it's, it's kind of tried and true, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, gu you know, guitar music and... and uh, you know, a bunch of kids with some guitars jumping up and down and making, you know, making some music that's exciting and mm -hmm. has that sort of youthful energy, you know? I think it, it works, right? And I think, I think it, I don't know, I, I think maybe in a way the reason, maybe one of the reasons we might talk about this now is because it's not really working at the moment, mm -hmm. right? I think it's probably fair well, to if say. If you look at the charts, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's... So, you know, I think, you know, I think the difference is, I think the difference is the culture, you know, mm. is, is, because I'm sure there's bands out there that are every bit as good as any bands have been, you know, in, in, you know, going through popular music. But I just think, I think the industry and the, and the radio and all that, and they go through phases of being more or less conservative or whatever, you know, mm. in the same way, like, I don't know. You know, when we when we made our first record, we never thought it would even get in the charts. Mm -hmm. You know, if it got in the top forty, it would have been great. And we put it out, and it was at, you know, it was at number th three first week in in England. You know, so it was like, <laughs> okay, you know what I mean. But we when we were making it, we never thought that 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 could become popular culture. You know, mm. so I don't know, man. <laughs> what I find interesting because. Uh, Looking at, because I have to skip over a whole lot yeah, of yeah, yeah. time, but looking uh, at the new album then, uh, Olympus Sleeping, as you mentioned just now, kind of that early on it was the feeling of just, um, well, four guys jumping up and down on the stage having fun. Yeah. And it, it seems that on this album you try to recapture that in, in yeah, a sense. Yeah. Is that fair to say? Yeah. It, well, that, that was a really fun thing for me in my life. It was a really, you know, creatively inspiring mm. thing. And then it became the the it it became something I wanted to rebel against because I was so <laughs> bored of doing it. You know, after you tour for like that long, you're just like, oh, okay, I don't want to do it. So then, from about 2009, 2010 onwards, I just didn't want to make guitar music. You know, which was, you know, um, and also it was kind of a little bit of um, what's what's the word? I, I you know, I had a lot of, because the band were doing very well, and we're playing big shows and stuff. I had a lot of people being like, hey man, you should really make another album for your career and you know, that kind of stuff. And I was, the more people said that, the more I was just like, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna go and do something else, you know. So the inner rebel kind of thing. Yeah, totally, because it always, yeah, you know. You end, the problem with that is you end up running out of things to rebel against eventually, because <laughs> you end up rebelling against your own rebellion, <laughs> which was a rebellion against your own rebellion in the first place. But yeah, I don't know, you know, and, and then, but then after a little bit of time, I was like, hmm, you know, all right, well, I'm going to plug in the electric guitar and see how it feels. We did a 10th anniversary for Up mm, All Night, yeah. and that kind of started it off, really. And I was like, mm, yeah, that felt, well, it's, it's all right, actually, you mm -hmm. know. And, um, and so that was, it was, this record was kind of my, yeah, it was like I said, I was, it was like I said in the promo, it was kind of like my love letter to, to that music, you know. Right. I was kind of like, actually, yeah, I don't mind this, you know. What do, what do I find interesting? Can I assume that you never doubted that there would be another Razorlight uh, record? Um, 
I, I don't know. Part of me definitely thought I wouldn't do it again, and part of me kind of always knew that I would. So I don't know, half and half. Well, I find it very interesting, because like you mentioned, uh, the band did very well. Um, and then, uh, like you say, you kind of tried to rebel against uh -huh. that whole thing. Yeah. Was it enjoyable, especially those the, the tail end of kind of... Uh, Touring Race Light towards the end. Was, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, playing and stuff, but... Um, creatively? Creatively, I was... No, it was... Well, the problem was because, you know, our third album was like a bit... For me, it was a bit confused, you know, we were trying to do different things and... Uh, so, yeah, it got pretty tough. And then after the third album, I was writing a lot and then I was really... Um, you know, I, well, like people that I trusted, like, which I'm not saying I shouldn't have trusted them, but people mm. at my label and stuff like that, they were very opposed to like what I was doing and stuff. Mm. So it was kind of like, I I did try, I tried for about a year or so to make maybe a fourth race I album or new stuff. And just like, I don't know, mm. I, I, it just, it just, I don't know. When I thought it was happening, it was like the label would just go, we're not going to release anything. And I was like, but hang on, guys. Since I signed with you, it's always been up to me. So why is it now, now that I guess that now that I've made you a load of money, now you're not going to leave it up to me anymore? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, it, and it, at the same time, I, I, I always would just do whatever I wanted to do. But you, you get a little, you know, if there's no one saying like, you know, if there's, like, you know, there's people that I trusted, you know, and if they're, if they're like, if they're not jumping up and down about it, you're like, mm, okay, you know. And mm. to be honest, I just wanted to like, at that point, I just wanted to have some fun because it was, uh, it was, you know, there's a lot of personal clashes in, in the first two lineups of Ray's Light and it was mm. like, I just wanted to go out and, um, and play some gigs and, you know, just talk shit with my friends <laughs> and, you know, have a good time, <laughs> you know. And if, if you look at then the kind of the new album, saying you, you wanted to have fun with friends. You, was there a specific catalyst for kind of what started off, what made you ready to, to start writing? I think it was just, it was just quite natural because okay. Scully phoned me up, he said, what, you know, what are you doing? And, and, and David Ellis, who's playing guitar in the group now, he, he'd just moved back from New York. And, and Scully was like, David's a really good guitarist and you guys should play together. Mm. And he'd been saying that for sort of years and I was like, yeah, well, I, I'm doing Zazu at the moment, you know, which I really enjoyed doing. And then, um, and then he was just like, uh, he phoned me up, you know, he's like, what are you doing? I said, well, you know, he said, look, why don't you just, why don't we have a jam and see how you feel? And I said, all right, I'm going to go and plug in the guitar. If it feels good, let's do it. Mm. And if it doesn't feel good, uh, I'm not going to do it, you know, because... I've only ever put a record out if I feel like I've put my best work into it, you know, because mm. that's the only way I can do it. You know? and, and so with... Uh... And, and I suppose the point is, I can't choose when I do my best work because it has to come through. Mm. So I, I just have to wait, you know, or not wait, but I, I have to sort of, sort of pray <laughs> for it to well, come through. Well, because you know? that's... Uh... I started uh, the interview with the question uh, about your first song, so, so that... Uh, what that philosophy on songwriting is it? Is it one of the, that you have to wait for some kind of divine inspiration? Well, sort in of. A sense? It, I always think it depends. It, everything depends on who you're talking to mm. in a song. I mean, people write songs in different ways. People write, you know, political songs, and people write, you know, sure. issue songs, and, and whatever. And people just write, you know, yogurt. We say in French, you know, yogurt. You know, <laughs> right? So it's like. But I always talk to people in my songs, and I think it just, you know. The songs get more interesting depending on who you're talking to, mm. you know? Like, obviously the least interesting song in the world is like talking to the girl that you want to like, you know, that you want to like get into a love projection with is always going to be the least interesting song, mm. um, you know? Or like telling somebody that they're a dickhead is going to be the second least interesting <laughs> song. And, you know, so depending on who you're talking to and what you're trying to express is kind of like, you know? Mm. So I think, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's kind of it, it happens to me, and, and when it happens, I'm pleased. Well, because when you start writing, uh, because you like you say, you, I think in 2013 you you, you had a go at yeah. making an album and didn't really work out. 
So, so what made these songs different when, once you kind of wrote them down, kind of got some... Was it kind of that, that rock and roll mindset that you had yeah, in the back I just, of your mind? I just felt inspired. I, I would just like go and see some music or hear something or, or whatever and I'd just go, yeah, okay. So there's that going on on that side of my brain and then on the other side there's like, okay, well there's, there's this person I want to talk to. I just run, so I run down to the piano and I'm like, Jung, okay, oh, well, that's my first chord and what's my first line? And as soon as I got the first line, it's like a phone... Like, you know, if you've got to phone someone, mm -hmm. you've got something really important to say, you know, or something difficult, you can, pre you can rehearse your sure. first line, mm -hmm. but you can't rehearse any more than that. You just have to be like, I know what I'm going to start with, and then we'll see where it goes. And for me, songwriting's like that. As soon as I got the first line, and I know who I'm talking to, then I just then it just comes out. You know? so in that sense, like, can I assume you don't know who you're talking about immediately? Oh, or no, the... I, well, sometimes, but okay. usually I do, yeah. Usually okay. I, I know who I'm trying to talk to, and I... And I and I, and I write that first line. Or as soon as I hear that first line, I know then I can, then I can put my faith in the unconscious bit to just mm. take me through. Which mm. doesn't always work. I mean, there's thousands of <laughs> carcasses of half-finished songs, you know? Fair enough. Um, but so, for instance, with a song like Care Yourself, what was um, kind of the image you had after that first line? Oh, yeah, well, that was... Yeah, I, I, I was... Uh, I was, having, I was It was a difficult situation and I just kind of um uh I don't know we that was one yeah the, the in fact I think that one I wrote slightly differently I think I was I think I was sitting on a plane and just suddenly the words all sort of came to me and I just started scribbling them down you know mm -hmm. and not necessarily in that order and then I started singing it and uh, you know I was just you know there was some, I know what it was there was somebody said something to me on the phone you know who said uh you know, I feel really bad, you know, what I, what I did to you was like, you know, the worst thing I've ever done. And I was like, oh, okay, all right, fine. And I, and I didn't really, I didn't really have anything to say about that apart from like, you know, we've all just got to take responsibility for ourselves, mm. you know. So I thought, well, you know, you're going to carry yourself and, and that's it. And I meant it in the terms of like, you got to walk that lonesome valley, you know, like something like that, you know, you, no one else can walk it for you, mm. you know. And, uh, and, but then it's funny because I sing it, uh, it's not a preachy song because I sing it to myself and I play it live and I think, well, you know, anytime, you, anytime you're giving someone else advice, you can really recognize that you're giving it to yourself as well. You know? Very true. But, so wh when you write a song like that, do, do you, how, how fleshed out does it become uh, before kind of going into the studio and actually... I, oh, with that one... With Carry Yourself, it was, yeah, we really worked on that because I worked on it with Dave because Dave wrote the, da, 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 wrote, wrote the riff and stuff. So we really, yeah, we worked on that quite a lot. Or did we? I think we were working on loads of other songs. And then at the end of the day, we, that one just sort of popped out, which quite often happens. And it was, uh, you know, that was a really interesting one because it was a different kind of, feel and a different kind of groove than any other Ray's Light song mm. and um, so it was fun to record but you know um, it was a process you know, definitely. fair enough yeah. I think they're ready for you at sound check so. if I can hear that <laughs> rumble it's a shame nice interview man. I'm very happy to talk to another time maybe yeah man alright yeah, thank you pleasure. so much pleasure. thanks for your intelligence and, <laughs> no and uh, good questions